Okay. Hey folks, Mark Locklear here with a quick screencast on chapter three, and this is how to retrieve data from a single table. So pretty broad chapter. I'm not going to go into detail on each and every topic they've got here. I'm just going to sort of hit some high points. Um, so this cover check, this chapter covers select statements and then where clauses order by and limit. Of course, select clauses are just sort of general select statements, you're selecting data that's going to be retrieved and displayed in the console where clause allows you to get specific about where data is being retrieved by, from order by is going to be ordering the data when it's displayed or retrieved. So it could be an ascending or descending order. And then the last one they have is limit, which, uh, you know, limits the amount of uh, uh, puts limits on the, the data that's retrieved in, in whatever form you might like. So I'm going to share my desktop. And let me pull this down. Um, so let's start by looking. I've just got a couple things specifically I want to look at and talk about. Uh, let me make sure, yeah. If you all aren't using the electronic version of the, the book, you should check that out. I think you get that by default. If you, you buy the book, you might have to email Murak about that. But it's actually kind of handy. I'm, I, I like, I'm one of those that I like, uh, I like having the physical book to read to. However, over the years, I've sort of moved toward using the electronic version. The search function is nice. Uh, often you're looking for a specific portion. I mean, yeah, you can look in the book. You can use the... Um, you can use the index in the, the back of the book, but, you know, obviously a keyword search is going to be more uh, effective. So I've sort of moved. I mean, the other thing is not having to lug that large book around. I'm often moving between home and work and other places and um, just having it on my computer or, you know, in a web, web browser is also handy without having to make sure I have the book with me at all times. Okay, uh, so a couple of things I just wanted to look at. One is this idea, then again, this is sort of bigger picture than these specific things, but this idea of functions, uh, if you've had, I think most of you should have had intro to pro pro programming, so you're, you're somewhat familiar with the idea of functions, but again, um, you know, MySQL has the same concept of various functions that are just sort of baked into MySQL are there for you to use. So for instance, just I'm looking at the top here, a handful of these are like left, uh, you know, that pulls a specific string. In fact, you, you're going to, one of the uh, requirements for an assignment I'm giving you, 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 you'll need to use, you know, either that left or right function. Um, date form, full format is going to be a big one. Um, if you've had either of my C++ or Java classes, you know that, mm, you'll know that manipulation of dates is, is a big deal and you're always doing it. And, you know, this brings up a good point around like, you know, whatever programming language you're using, you're going to have the ability to manipulate and change date formats, but then you can also do it at the database level too. So as a developer, often, you know, you're, you're going to have to make a decision about, okay, what's the most efficient way for me to do this? Uh, and again, imagine a scenario where, uh, and again, we talked about this in chapter one, I think, of your, um, you've got an application on the front end, you're, you're getting and retrieving data using that front end application, it's making calls to this database on the, 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 the back end, and so how do you want to store data to begin with, and like, a date using something like date formats, a good example of that. If, if, a, if a user enters a date on the front end, I can have the, at the application level, I can, I can manipulate that date and then, you know, store it on the, the back end after that change has been made, or maybe, uh, maybe I just send the raw date to the, in this case, MySQL database, and then have the formatting be done based on a function that I've written inside the MySQL table and inside the MySQL query. So, you know, again, there's there's all kinds of, and there's no right or wrong answer to that necessarily. It just sort of, it, you know, the engineer's answer is it depends, right? Uh, it depends on, you know, the amount of data you're, you're, you're dealing with, 
Maybe you have access to the back end of the data database. Maybe you don't. So there's all kinds of factors as a developer you're, you're going to ha have to choose there. But again, just the examples we're looking at here, left, date format, and round. Round, these are all, uh, you know, these are all functions that are baked into MySQL that are sort of there for you to, to, to be able to use. Uh, the other thing I wanted to look at is... ORs, so this is conditional, and again, uh, you know, hopefully you're seeing a pattern here. You know, when we look at this idea of data manipulation in general, that's really all programming is, whether it's at the application level. So again, think PHP, Java, C++, Python. You know, the, those are all functions to be able to store and, manip store and man manipulate data. MySQL is no different. It's actually super powerful you know and in general too it's worth saying that um mysql is generally databases are more efficient at this sort of data manipulation uh or, or even at the query level now again you have to make a decision and it depends on like how how big is this app if you're a google or a facebook or an e ebay you know, you're dealing with massive, massive amounts of data. And at any one time, there may be, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands, or maybe millions of queries going on. So again, you're you're making a decision at a very, uh, I, I guess, at a very low level about how you want to manip how you want to manipulate data and whether you want to do it at the application level or at the that database level. But again, I just wanted to note here, point out that the, the use of logical operators or conditionals, so things like and, we can do and statements, ors, nots, and you can work these into queries all sorts of, of ways. And again, I, I'm hoping what you'll see with the exercises is I, they're very, in some ways, very open-ended. Sometimes I'm leading you down a path or maybe I'm giving you hints but you don't necessarily ought to have to always follow the hints that I, I'm giving you there. I'll try and be explicit in the exercise if I want you to do things a specific way. But sometimes, you know, for example, uh, with some of the exercise, I'll just give you a screen. I'm just giving you some output of what the results should look like. And it's up to you to figure out what the query might be. Again, I might maybe giving you some, some hints, but you don't necessarily have to follow those hints. Okay, so that's, uh, that, that's that. Next thing I wanted to do is just... I'm not going to do the entire exercise for you, but I'm going to take one of the, this is from exercise two. I'm going to take one of the exercises I'm asking you to do and just have you, um, or just walk you through what it looks like. I mean, just so you can see it. I mean, I think for many of you probably working at the console and a terminal window is going to be new. And, uh, and you know, the, the, we've got the student exercises are on the server, but then you also, and that's going to be, again, that's sort of my recommendation, but I want you should work however you're most comfortable. In this case, what you're looking at here is these are the student files. And let's see if I've got that a folder open. Yeah. So, for instance, you know, if you download the student files, these should be in Moodle. Um, and these are in... These are in, yeah, this is the student underscore download. And then the, the example solutions ex underscore solutions and then you've got all the chapters so these are all the exercises in the book if you haven't figured out that by now all of the exercises they're giving you the book you've got solutions to those so again i think i laid that out in one of the earlier videos that's sort of the way the course is set up the exercises each week are going to be the first one you, you know you're going to be asked to just do one of the exercises in the book you've already got a solution to it if you want to sort of cheat and go straight to, to the end and just look at the solution and skip that one, that that's up to you. The idea is if you want to challenge yourself some, you know, I would spend, I, I wouldn't spend days trying to solve those. If you're having issues with them, you know, maybe set a timer for 30 minutes or an hour, see how far you can get or see if you can solve it. And then you can go back and look at the solution and see how, how close you got. And, and again, the other thing is there's no right answers here necessarily. I mean, if they, if they ask you to do it a specific way, you need to stay within the requirements, but they're asking you to, you know, there may be more than one. In fact, uh, there most certainly is more than one way to do a lot of these queries. So that's the other interesting fun thing is if you, assuming you solve it and you get the same result that they did, 
um, that if you know your query may look a little different than what the book solution query is. So that that's just a fun way to challenge yourself. Uh, I'm looking here, and this may change in the future, but right now it, uh, I'm asking you to modify the query from step nine. So that would be uh, uh, this exercise three dash zero nine. So the results displayed as so the results are displayed as first initial comma a space and then the full last name with all capitalized letters okay so let's look at i'll, I'll just walk again i'm not going to solve the whole thing for you i'll just get you started but just to show you how i i work again what you're looking at here this code is on my local machine i'm using a sublime text editor is what I, i'm using this is just a text editor i'm not going to run the code in this text editor it's just going to be an easy way for me to edit the code now you can do that inside the terminal window with vim i think i've i sort of introduced you to that in some earlier well uh, or at least in the first exercise I, I had you modify some uh some of the scripts on the server using vim and there may be times when you need to do that uh, but like another way to do it is to just use a text editor locally to make changes, you know, generally you're probably going to be more efficient and faster working inside a text editor locally on your machine and then paste that into the console and run those commands. So just, um, yeah, we're going to walk through that now just, just so you can see. And in fact, I'll exit the, the database just so you can see 100%. So, you know, you can assume I've logged into Linux at this point. Also, just so you know, the up arrow, if you use the up arrow inside the terminal, it can, it'll bring up the last command that you've run. Um, and let me maybe increase the size of this a little bit, just so. So I'm going to log in. I've got an account called student, so I'm going to log into that account. And then if I show databases, there's my databases. I've got an AP underscore student. You're going to have an AP underscore, and then whatever your student name is. So I'm going to say use AP underscore student. Got to spell it right. Okay. Now I'm just going to paste this query in. This is the sample solution that the book gave, and it's just like a sanity check for me to say, okay, let me make sure like this works and I'm in, in the right spot. And I, again, I just did control V. I just highlighted the entire query, did control V, and then, or I'm on Mac, so it's command instead of control, but uh, did control V here to paste it and hit return and okay. So I know that query runs, and in this case, it's giving me the uh vendor this is from the vendors table it's giving me the vendor contact last name vendor contact first name okay now so i've asked you to modify that in a couple ways so what i'm going to do is i, I don't want to monkey with the original query in case i, I screw some, something up so i'm just going to make a copy of that i'm going to paste it right below it and then this is where i'm going to modify things so for instance the first thing that i ask you to do is to really you're just swapping things around right i'm asking you to to display the first initial yeah the the first in, initial of the first name and then the full last name in all capital letters so I'm already displaying last name, first name. So I'm just going to start by changing this uh, around. So um, let's just, it might be easier to, I'm just going to do first name here rather than cut, cut and paste. And I'm just going to do last name here. All right. So now rather than me displaying last name, then first name, I should be getting first name first and then last name last. All right, going to copy that, go to the console, paste it, run it. Okay, good. So I'm getting first name first, then I'm getting the, the last name. Next thing. So now the next step I'm going to do is I'm asking you to only display the first initial of the first name. So I would modify that. If you go back in the book and look, I think they use the left method for that. I'm not going to do, do that for you. That's just a hint, but I would apply that method to the first name. So I only get the first initial. So that's a way to solve that. 
And then the other one's actually sort of a curveball in that I'm, I, I ask you to, um, I ask you to capitalize the entire last name. Now, currently, the first initial of the last name is being, uh, the first initial of the last name is being capitalized, but not the entire one. So, well, how do I do that? And well, in fact, the book doesn't cover that, or at least I don't think it covered it in in our ch chapter. Uh, but you know what? I'm going to use Aunt, Aunt Google here, and I'm going to say. MySQL capitalize all letters. And when I do that, well, the very first thing that comes up here is, huh, there's an upper function. Uh, without even looking at, at that, without even looking at the details of the upper function, if you think about it, you can probably guess how it works. And in fact, again, we're experimenting here. You know, this is a learning process. So let's just guess. I'm just going to apply the upper function and then it you put parentheses on it and you just put in parentheses whatever you actually want to get capitalized so in this case i want to capitalize vendor last name the entire that entire string so now i'm going to copy that i'm going to paste it in and then boom there you go so notice all the last names are capitalized here okay uh so i think that's all i'm going to stop there that's just to give you a sense, I just wanted to get you rolling on the first exercise. And just, again, I'll also show you, you know, one way to work in this in environment. Again, this is sort of the way I would do it. And again, as I notice, I'm sort of being strategic about how I'm solving these exercises, right? I'm asking you, generally, I'm probably asking you to do multiple things. And rather than, you know, so, so number one, the first thing is let's start with the query that, that works let's start with the query i've got in place make sure it runs make a copy of, of that and then start to do small small tweaks right i didn't go in and change three or four things at one time and then try and make that work because once you do that you know and, and again you know i'm just gonna i'm just gonna cause an, an error here once you do that and you go paste this in oh, oh I, I you know i got an error here you know the the errors in mysql often are notorious for being not great so you, you generally want to be very strategic about the changes that you're making um, and just sort of doing one thing at a time. The first thing I did was just swapped first name and, and last name. OK, OK, once I got that working, OK, let me see if I can apply the upper function. OK, I got that piece taken care of. The last piece is getting the first initial of the vendor last last name. And notice I tested each time to make a, make a small change, paste that query in to my SQL see if it runs and see if it does what I, I want it to do. Okay, yeah, that works. Okay, now let me make another small change or another small tweak, paste that into MySQL. Okay, that 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 runs, okay? All righty. That is all. I'll stop there. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, just shoot me an e email. Thanks.